extraterrestrial origin of the humankind. How did we arrive from the stars? And how will we get back home? In one of our songs, there are words that sound like a proclamation. Soon we will go back, and we will fly to the stars over there. I will like to ask the opposite question. How did we arrive from the stars in the first place? The fact that these us who have gotten from there to here are these of the future us who we aspire to become. I am talking about the states of mind which we are trying to acquire again. Talking about the stars, we will fly to the stars over there. These are pure metaphors I use to remind people of who they really are, those ourselves from the future. That is the allegory which allows for the initiation of some higher feelings and emotions. This is an allegory of the attainability we see and which we personalize with the stars. According to our perceptions, the trip to any star might take millions of years. However, in reality, you do not have to fly anywhere. In fact, the allegory of reaching the stars which reflect our future state of consciousness becomes easily achievable once we free ourselves from the conditions that keep us here on Earth and which attract us to our physical, biological bodies and our biological form types. Once we get rid of interests, that we hold here, we will not have to fly anywhere. We will not have to physically move anywhere, as we will simply become those future ourselves. When we become these future ourselves, then the stars we see now will change accordingly. They will not exist any longer. The stars themselves will then change their configurations, because the stars we see in the sky belong to the con current continuum groups, and thus have certain shapes and forms that precisely matches the energy and matter of current continuum groups. In continuums, where our configurations become of higher quality, configurations of planetary and stellar entities change accordingly and radically as well. Because we actually become these configurations, we become these worlds, so the stars disappear. Let me ask you the counter question. If we have presumably arrived here, manifested in low quality biological forms, and have to fly back to stars while remaining in the same low frequency biological forms, then what was the point of our arrival? The answer is, after the arrival, we have become these very low-frequency biological forms because otherwise we would not be able to perform the mission that we carry out here. We all are performing our individual missions, not just people that are here around me, but all the people living on Earth, those that are drunk, those that are bad, including all others, everyone fulfills their own mission. The mission is to learn to understand the meaning of our existence and to arrive at the idea of unity between all people, the determined unity, which is impossible to break away. Many of you might think, well, I am a very good person, so why am I still here? Yes, you are definitely a good individual. However, you are part of the entire humankind, a part of this unity. Hence, while you will be unable to create a better surrounding environment on Earth, you will not be able to realize yourself in the higher quality forms of creativity of which you already know, which you can feel and sense, and of which you might dream. Therefore, this understanding of improving our surrounding reality is, in fact, a part of the task and the essence which is embedded in all of us. Thus, it is obvious that up until we fully understand, 
recognize and input all our available energy and our knowledge into the implementation of the noble objective of making the world around us much better, more pristine and harmonious, we will remain in these low-quality biological states of consciousness and in these continuums. Looking at inaccessible stars as unto some kind of unrealizable dream. However, the more qualitative something is that takes on a different configuration at the moment, when our configuration itself has changed and transformed into a less tangible form, which according to our present perceptions, means totally different type of materiality, less biological and increasingly refined, subtle and radiant. That does not mean, however, that the radiance we got accustomed to is the same there. No, this light, which manifests itself under certain conditions, it is a normality which is naturally accepted by the perception systems we possess in the future, transitioning from biological into the bioplasma forms. The world that we experience in the future is not actually luminous, as many of you might think. It becomes normal for our systems of perception once we refocus into these realities. All of our ideas pertaining to our future and us, based on some dreams we often experience or some specific conditions, when you see the luminous essence of light or luminous essence of goodness, all that is reflected in your systems of your perception, because that is how you perceive these wave oscillations. Once your configuration improves, harmonizes and balances, your reformed perception systems will realize it quite differently. Thus, the mentioning of stars in our songs reflect an allegory pertaining to our future qualitative state of consciousness. This does not mean, however, that we will board some kind of spaceship and fly back to the stars while remaining in those same states of consciousness, reflecting all our current displays of negativity, aggression, hostility, ignorance, arrogance, and animalistic lust, and after arriving there someone will supposedly perform some redemptive manipulations of our mind, making us better. Not at all. Everything is done here and now. Everything is done by ourselves here. Never anyone can perform this task for you nor anyone can, because everyone can create and strive to something only rich in the space of their own self-consciousness, according to an individual interest. If someone has read my older editions, they might recall that I once wrote about so-called levitation beings. They are also related to the process of revitalization in this example, the notion revitalization pertains to the word life, as in Latin, vitae. In fact, the series of posthumous refocusing occurring in other scenarios within the levitation beam 
appears as the sum of all of these qualitative changes, making your focus dynamics devoid of the exorbitant bulk of the low-frequency focus activity. Which is immediately converted into your intuitive experience. Intuitive experience.